Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Surviving Scientology on YouTube. Today we have with us Aaron Smith Levin. Aaron, welcome to the show. Hi Jeff, thanks. Aaron, I love your YouTube channel. It's called Growing Up in Scientology. You're a Thank second you. generation Sea Org member. Or are you third? Well, second generation Scientologist, um, but first of my lineage to be in the Sea Org, if that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah. You know, for uh, what we're going to cover today on, on uh, this episode is fair game, Scientology's Doctrine of Fair Game, created by L. Ron Hubbard, and social media in particular, as Scientology engages in fair game on social media. What we're going to cover today is the Church of Scientology's attack on Mike Rinder on uh, Twitter. And it was in other channels, but mainly they used his daughter, who's in the Sea Org, Taryn Toysh, and uh, her mother, Mike's ex-wife, Kathy Bernardini. And this was played out on Twitter, and I wanted to um, have you on because you were in the Sea Org, and you know the church works, and I was watching it, you know, as a critic. Um, and it's an interesting way of comparing notes. For new Scientology watchers, the, the fair game operations are uh, conducted by uh, a department of the church called the Office of Special Affairs or we would just refer to it as OSA. Uh, Aaron, could you tell new Scientology watchers what OSA is and does it, how it functions in the Church of Scientology? Sure, so OSA is basically the external facing arm of the Church of Scientology. Um, they handle all of the legal, media, public relations, and investigations, investigatory aspects of um, of Scientology. So whereas your average staff member or your average Sea Org member or just your average Scientologist would um, in Scientology be warned not to read any negative press about Scientology or not to try to engage or handle um, any critics or people considered suppressive or anti-Scientology. That's exactly what the people in OSA are tasked with doing. Uh, the people in OSA go out of their way to read the negative things that are being said online about Scientology because they're the ones that have to go um, after those people. Um, the OSA staff members are the ones who would order investigations into people who were uh, considered to be attacking the church to try to find their weak spots to leverage them to get them to stop doing what they're doing. So in, in some way, OSA sometimes gets characterized as uh, Scientology secret police or you know the Scientology SS or um, however, <laughs> however you want to characterize them. They're, um, if you wanted to call them the bad guys in Scientology, that would be a characterization they kind would, of, yeah. yeah. That would be fair. Now, yeah. now, the Office of Special Affairs runs an internet unit, the OSA internet unit. And they are basically have their staff 24-7 to watch what's happening on the internet. And... Uh, uh, oh, for sure. They're the ones that organize all of the um, fake sock accounts, all the sock accounts yeah. on Twitter, Facebook, and everything. Tori Christman has um, um, said a lot about her experience as a public working as a volunteer for OSA and how they were tasked with creating these fake internet accounts to jump into conversations between former Scientologists and try to pit them against each other and get them to start arguing about things and fighting about things. Um, so there's no question that's if, if you see people online, you know, messing with former Scientologists and, and making these weird arguments to get people to spend time fighting with them about them, it, it's OSA staff members usually using stock accounts. Yeah, one of OSA's favorite tactics online is divide and conquer to get mm -hmm. critics, former members arguing with each other. So if you see divide and conquer and it's a unknown account, um, which, which, which brings us up to uh, the attack on... Mike Rinder. When Leah announced um, that season three was going to go, suddenly there was a plan developed inside of OSA to attack Mike Rinder and to try to get him fired from the show. Now, preceding this, just to bring um, our viewers up, up to uh, speed, who may not have been following the story, several months before this, in fact, it may have gone into, well, earlier this year, maybe even last year, a lot of us on Twitter, several of us, um, caught the Church of Scientology Office of Special Affairs using what we call stock photo Scientologists. That is, the church was literally buying stock photos, putting them on pictures of members of the Stanley. Our favorite, of course, is uh, 
Alicia Silverson, if you can see her. Now, it's funny because Alicia is a stock photo. You can go buy her image. She's a model. And the name, though, Alicia Silverson, sounds like Alicia Silverstone, the actress. That's not coincidental. They want to grab your attention at a subliminal level. So on Twitter, we exposed all these phony stock photo Scientologists. But shame on Osa, if you can't use, you know, stand up name, rank, serial number, real person, to hell with your phony stock photo Scientologists. It's deplorable. Okay, so the attack starts uh, on Mike Rinder, starts what I think is a disgusting way. They, the Church of Scientology works to insert itself into the Me Too movement. Can you t tell our viewers about how this came about? Um, well, when you say how it came about, like, um, well, here's what I think you mean. Just stop me if, if sure. I'm off track. So, you know, this is all about this incident where about 10 staff members from the international management base descended upon Mike Rinder while he was in the parking lot of a doctor's office uh, where his now wife, Christy, was um, yeah. having an appointment relating to her pregnancy. Uh, and then they were trying to prevent Mike from leaving the area. They were trying to take his car keys. They were preventing him from getting into his car. There was there was physical confrontation taking place. And in the process of all this, Mike's then wife, Kathy, um, got a scratch on her arm. Okay, so the church has made a whole um, deal about this over the years. But then what, and you know, like, like it's been a few years that the church has been trying to call Mike Rinder a, a wife beater for sure. Kathy getting a scratch on her arm during this yeah. essentially assault on Mike Rinder. Okay, but then the Harvey Weinstein debacle unfolds, and the Me Too movement comes into being. Yeah. And what was it? What was the thing that came right on the heels of the Me Too movement? Never again. I think Me Too and Never Again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So all of a sudden, you have powerful people being fired, suffering, um, uh, not suffering, experiencing justified consequences. Um, due to bad behavior, and the, and all of this is in response to nothing more than basically tweets. You know, tweets are toppling powerful men. Absolutely. You know, it's pretty much all men, right? Yeah. And so then Scientology goes, oh my God, look, we can, uh, the, society is, is finally dethroning these powerful men using nothing but the power of uh, Twitter. We can get on, we can ride that wave and we can take this stuff that we've been saying about, about Mike Rinder and we can try to use the power of the Me Too movement, um, leverage the power of the Me Too movement to, um, to try to give our uh, BS message more impact and try to get Mike fired by, from, uh, you know, Disney owns a &E. they're, they're basically trying to get Disney to fire Mike from the Scientology and the Aftermath show, which is uh, absurd because they play, all they're doing is playing into everything that the show is already exposing. Sure. That the church will stop at nothing to destroy its its critics. And so um, it, it, it's just some random thoughts I have about this. I'm sure we'll uh, get yeah. into them deeper as we go on. Is they've totally missed the point of the Me Too movement. It just makes it all the more obvious that it's just a ruse. It's just a PR scheme they're trying to do here. Um, the Me Too movement is about sexual abuse. Yeah. It's, it's not about domestic abuse. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, not, not to, um, domestic abuse is an important issue, but that's not what hashtag Me Too is about. Yes. And also, the Me Too movement is not about people talking about things that happen to other people. It's about people talking about things that happen to themselves. That's why it's called Me Too, not You Too. <laughs> yeah. And so they've they've rolled out Taryn, Mike's daughter, to go all around the country trying to appear at these women's groups meetings saying, let me tell you about a terrible thing that my father did to my mother. So not only is the whole story just bullshit, but they... They don't even understand what it is they're trying to co-opt. I think that's pretty evident from what I've seen. And, and let's, for, uh, for our viewers, let's roll this back to its origins. It happened in uh, 2011, and uh, specifically uh, April 23, I'm sorry, 2010. 
April 23, 2010. So Mike Rinder is uh, in a parking lot, as you said, making phone calls. His now wife and fiance, uh, Christie's in the doctor's office, right? So let's set this up. The people there are, you said, three of Scientology's top Sea Org executives. At least. I mean, yeah. I, I, again, if, I, if I'm mistaken about this, sure. uh, these details are yeah, fungible. Put, 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 put I want to say Guillermo Serve, uh, I thought it was Guillermo Serve, Mark Yeager, um, well, and Jenny Linson, and um, I, I just read the list online recently, and I didn't see Mark Dave, or Dave, Guillermo Dave, Dave, Dave Bloomberg. Dave Bloomberg is yeah. a, a, yes. So. And... But I thought it was. I thought that Mark and Guillaume were there, and I could have been mistaken about that. Well, well, if if not, uh, please put it in the in the comments on the YouTube video. But so you have you have some top Sierra executives, and then you have uh, Mike Rinder's daughter, his then wife Kathy, and you have Mike Rinder's brother, Andrew. Andrew, and then uh, I don't know if his son was there, but uh, you his son was not there. Okay, his son was not there. So you have a large group of Scientologists who just happened to be driving by, and Mike's in a parking lot off the main road. They just happened to be in the neighborhood driving by, and like, oh, look, there's Mike. Let's go. Is that really what they said, Jeff? Is that really their story? We just happened to be driving well, by? Look at look at this nonsense. Okay, you're in a parking lot in Florida, right, at a particular time and place, and you're making phone calls. Now, the idea that they would just randomly show up is ridiculous. This was a pre-planned ambush on Mike Render to try to cave him in and get him to stop, as um, Jenny Linson likes to say, stop committing full-time, what she, stop committing, yeah, yeah, stop committing full-time suppressive acts. Present time. You are full-time committing suppressive acts or whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So they're going to use a Scientology voodoo and they're going to scream. Yeah. And um, Mike was on the phone with John Sweeney, who was in with the BBC. The whole thing's online. I'll post. Uh, I'll post a link to them screaming. Kathy, Taryn, Jenny—they're dropping the f bomb. I mean, it is like every other word is f as they're screaming at Mike. And John Sweeney is getting this on tape. It's recorded. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'll, like I said, I'll post the link. So Mike is kind of like trying to get a, you know get himself like get back into the office to get to to his fiance right. They follow him. This mob follows him into the doctor's office. The doctor tells him to get out. You're not allowed. You can't go into a doctor's office screaming and carrying on. And Kathy says, I'm married to him. I, you know, so it's, uh, she's, she's uh, mad. Taryn's mad. Everyone is mad. But, but in Scientology, they would call that confronting and shattering suppression, right? And so the, someone calls the police, right? And the sheriff's, it's actually Pinellas County Sheriff's Office comes out. Someone calls the paramedics because, you know, as Mike's kind of trying to get people out of the way, his ex-wife has uh, an abrasion on her, her forearm, right? How do we know this? We know this because the church made what's called the paramedics run sheet, a public document. This is actually a copy of what the paramedics reported. And if you see here, it's just noted a skin tear on Kathy's arm. Is that what it says? It uses the word skin tear? Yes. In fact, you can see skin tear. My camera doesn't self-adjust. This is posted on the Scientology Money Project. I'll put it in the show notes as well. You can download it as a PDF and read it for yourself. Any viewer who cares to look at the actual evidence. Yeah. And um, an interesting thing, when the paramedics arrive on scene, paramedics do an assessment they ask her to describe her pain level from zero to ten she kathy bernardini tells the paramedics her pain level is two two this is, is important for as we move into the story of uh what this turns into now under under pinellas county law really under any u.s law for paramedics if you call the paramedics you are a third party the, the presumption legally is that you need to be transported to the nearest appropriate emergency hospital room or department, right? And so Kathy Bernardini twice refuses to be transported to the hospital. 
The paramedics apply gauze to her forearm and some ointment. Taryn, her daughter, who would later claim that her mother was savagely attacked, does nothing. She doesn't say, get my mother to a hospital. Because you think if your mother were savagely attacked, you're like, I'm going to get in the ambulance with you and go. But it's like, gauze was applied. I take right. Taryn doing nothing to be nothing else needed to be done. Mom, arm got a scratch, ointment, gauze, that's it. Okay. Jeff, I'm, I'm looking right now at Scientology's um, webpage that they have dedicated to this. Mike Rinder, the wife beater. Yeah. They say, quote, separated collarbone, severe abrasions, and nerve damage. And you match that up with her refusing to be transported to the hospital and saying her pain was a 2 out of 10. I think if I were to stub my toe, it would rate higher than a 2 out of 10. Yeah, and, and this, uh, you know, on the paramedics report, she doesn't report collarbone separation, injuries. On the video, uh, Kathy does. She says, I could hear my bones crunching. Right. She doesn't tell the paramedics that. So what she's stuck with is an actual document. Now, what's interesting in this document is when she refused to be transported to a hospital, she, re she refused medical treatment. It's a release of, of uh, medical treatment. Mm -hmm. and, th and this is, a, a, here, page three, release of medical assistance. So she signs a release of medical assistance, needing no further medical care, doesn't, you know, twice refuses to be transported. Kathy Bernardini signs this. She does, uh, so obviously she, when the paramedics show up, she's on her feet, she's ambulatory, she's conscious. There's no reason for the paramedics to transport her. They spent a total of, what, 28 minutes at the scene, I think that's it. And then they were available for another call. So on this document, it was witnessed by a Pinellas County Sheriff's deputy and a member of uh, the paramedics team that responded. So the interesting thing, Aaron, is we're tearing this thing apart. Uh, Mike Rinder was not charged with anything. The sheriff who arrived on scene, the deputies determined there was only incidental contact. So it's right. like if I, if you and I encountered each other in a parking lot and I kind of like maybe brushed against you or like, you know, we were had a little tussle, incidental contact, right? That's like what happens when you go to a baseball game. Maybe there's, you know, so Mike's trying to get out of his way. He's not arrested, not charged with anything. And he was still on the scene when the, when the law enforcement was there, am I right? Uh, yes, yes, because he, right. he they so, are, yeah. Right, so how easy, I mean, we have to remember, or we have to remind the viewers, OSA, and in this case, these uh, staff members from international management, they're not necessarily OSA staff, but they're being ordered, for, I mean, I, I'm going to back up a little bit. Yeah. All of these staff members work in Los Angeles. Mike's brother flew, lives in Australia, you have people from Los Angeles and Australia who just so happen to be in the same vehicle or... Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so you have all these guys who, 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 are, who, who are there to create an impact on Mike. And we also know that when these operations are going on, one of the things they are trying to accomplish is to provoke someone to do something that would cause them to be arrested. They have done this many, many times. They did it with Marty Rathbun. You could probably think of five other people. They, they try to provoke a reaction so that you can do something so that they can call the police and get you arrested. Sure. And yet all of these people, all of the work that the church did to bring all of these people to Clearwater to confront Mike, this, uh, this great opportunity to press charges against Mike existed right in front of them, and it wasn't taken. So what does that tell you? It was a no thing. <laughs> it was so small, it didn't even occur to someone to go, oh, we could get Mike on this right now, because otherwise they would have. Well, you had sheriff's deputies on the scene. There was no domestic assault. None. Right, right. And, and so... And, yeah, and in addition to the quote I read just a couple minutes ago, uh, another quote from this thing is, Mike shredded his ex-wife's arm so severely she will never regain full use of it. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. Tell me again how your pain was 2 out of 10 and you declined to press charges. I, give me a break. Well, she didn't decline to press charges. It was never even an option. No, it was never because, an option. no because the state would, would make an arrest. It's, the, the state I should is, say yeah. didn't even attempt to press charges. No, she, she couldn't because it wasn't sustainable and... Um, 
one thing that's interesting is, of, uh, as I understand it, and, and, and maybe Mike could clarify in comments, I think some of the Sea Org members took off when they heard the sirens coming. Like Absolutely. The Sea Org execs get the hell out. Let's Absolutely. Go. Because let me, let me uh, just say one thing here. It is possible that it did occur to them, oh, we might be able to get Mike on this. But the follow-up thought was, oh, shit. If the police come and take everyone's statement, how are we going to explain how 10 Sea Org members from out of town happened to stumble upon Mike Rinder in the parking lot of a doctor's office in the backwoods of Clearwater? Like, they, were fo they had to be following Mike and Christy to know that Christy was inside a doctor's office and Mike was outside in a parking lot by himself, prime target to be accosted. So it's possible that they were like, oh, this is an opportunity, but we can't take it because it exposes us to too much risk. It's yeah, who, know, who knows? To, and, and also there may have been HIPAA violations. How would they know that his, his uh, fiance had a doctor's appointment unless they had a medical records or they were tapping the phone? And... Uh, Kathy reports a pain level of two. There's some gauze ointment. She leaves. And right. they go to debrief Office of Special Affairs, right? Right. Now, that's actually what happens because we have the sheriff's report. We have the paramedics run sheet. We have the audio from John Sweeney. And Mike even offers to talk to his brother Andrew if he'll get in the car, get away from the screaming mob. Mm -hmm. You can hear Mike. It, Mike's trying to be conciliatory toward Andrew. And Andrew's saying, I flew all the way from Australia. So to your yeah. point, yeah, this was this was like follow him, find him when he's most vulnerable, see if we can do something, if we right. can cause some effect. Now, what happens next in Freedom Magazine? They try to portray Mike in a false light, very defamatory light, as, uh, as a wife beater when that never happened. But this is what the Church of Scientology does. One of Elron Hubbard's policy, he says, if attacked on any vulnerable point, find or manufacture, find or manufacture evidence. And if possible, ruin them utterly. So this is this is what fair game is. If possible, ruin them utterly. That means financially, reputationally, and in every other possible way. Um, now moving fa so this is a, a 2010 event. We move it forward into Twitter and the Me Too movement. They see an opportunity, like you said, to seize on it, turn this parking lot confrontation. Taryn tries to spin it into an event. Where it it's not sexual violence, it's not sexual assault, it's not rape. It's, it's her mother was part of a gang that basically ambushed her ex-husband as a setup. Right. So they try to spin it into the Me Too movement. Now what's interesting out here in Los Angeles, the uh, YWCA, Greater Los Angeles, is a very powerhouse group, very prestigious group. And... Um, they had an event to award uh, Phenomenal Women Awards, and then that's quite an honor to get. And one of the heroes of the Me Too movement is Gretchen Carlson, mm -hmm. who took on Fox at the height of its power, Fox News. I remember Fox tried to slander her. They, yep. tr they tried to say she's a gold digger, this was a setup, but it wasn't. Uh, she toppled, uh, you could say Roger Ailes, She's instrumental in bringing. Is she, is she the one that Bill O'Reilly gave thirty-five? Had to give thirty-five million dollars to her? Or was that someone else? You know, with Bill O'Reilly, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure he was involved, and I'm not that familiar. I know Gretchen Carlson. You know, she she sued them, and that is really what triggered it. So she's a hero of the Me Too movement, right? And I don't know all the financial details, but she was a victim of sexual harassment in the workplace shouldn't have happened and she took on Fox and 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 I you know it, it was it was a an act of courage on her part to take on a, a juggernaut like Fox yeah Fox News especially because that's that's those are the the people who don't who don't who play hardball right so yeah, Gret yeah. so Gretchen's getting the award at this event and who shows up at the event but Taryn Teusch now, what we see on Taryn's uh, page, I forget what it's called, something about mom, uh, justice for mom, something like that, right? Uh, 
Taryn gets her picture taken with Gretchen Carlson. Now that that means to get her picture taken to use on her social media page on her blog. That means she had a photographer with her. Mm-hmm. Now before the show, set up the context of this because she's not like you or I going to a show. She's a Sea Org right. member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the things that makes this so funny to observe um, to former staff members or former Sea Org members. Um, because someone like Taryn, the public at large, like your average just American public, would look at Taryn and be like, oh, a, a sweet girl fighting for her mom. Yeah. But if you understand how Scientology works, you're like, no, 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 no. A Sea Org member like Taryn, who has a full-time job at the Int base, working 110 hours a week or more, doesn't just go around the country on her own dime and because she's passionate for a cause. She doesn't just decide what she gets to do on a day-to-day basis. She doesn't just, she's not able to go, I'm going to take a sabbatical and go, you know, <laughs> join in this, <laughs> this uh, grassroots movement. No, I, I had made a point to you in a conversation we were having yeah. that for Taryn to be doing what she's doing, she is on, she's been fired on a Sea Org mission. There's a mission briefing. There's the mission orders. You get to take, use clay and, and do clay demonstrations of how you're going to accomplish your mission orders. You have a mission I see, a mission second, a mission third. Um, you, you have someone running you. Your, your mission operator is running you. You daily reports on everything because Someone like Taryn doesn't get to go around the country and interact with the media and be on social and be on social media um, without it being a Sea Org mission. Mm. And that's what you don't see behind the scenes when you're just when you're looking at a photo op or a blog article or a little YouTube video. Um, Happy Women's Day, everyone. Uh, you know, God, God bless all women. You know, a Scientologist watching this is like one Scientologist don't talk like that. Two, Scientologists aren't on, the CR members aren't on YouTube. Three, this is completely disingenuous. Um, and and it, like, oh, by the way, and, and that, that mission doesn't get, that mission doesn't get fired without direct orders from David Miscavige. Yeah, and, you know, they're, they're basically just regurgitating this message that they've already put out repeatedly in their Freedom Magazine yeah. thing. And then they're trying to reinvent the message to... Um, they, they thought they were actually so naive as to think that Disney was just going to cave out of fear because they cloaked their attacks um, with the credibility of the Me Too movement. They were really that naive. Um, and, and I'm amazed that uh, it, oh, it's probably only a handful of people on OSA that even know what the Me Too movement is because Sierra members don't watch the me- don't watch the news, don't watch the media, don't pay attention. So um, I think th- I think that's what you're asking me about there. The fact that Ter- Taryn's on a on a mission, and I don't mean on a mission like oh she has a, she's passionate about a cause. No, she's on a Sea Org mission. Yeah, and and mission to- the definite purpose to get my, to get Mike fired from the TV show. She is, and, and to to uh, give some more detail and information context to new Scientology watchers, the Sea Org is Scientology's paramilitary organization. You signed the one billion year contract, and when you're a Sea Org member, you live on what's called a base, right? You live on base. It's like a military base. You're yeah. not allowed to leave base without permission. And yeah. I just wanted to amplify this point you made, so you can't say, "Hey, uh, it's 3:30. I think I'll get my car and go out for a, you know, whatever." Right? You can't leave base. Right. So you can't even go to the grocery store on Sunday morning without express permission. I mean, she she doesn't have her own money for a car. She doesn't have her own money for a flight. She doesn't have her own money for. A wardrobe, although you can tell that because she's wearing the same thing in all of her photos. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. None of what she's doing could be done on her on her own behalf. It would have to be done for her by so the she, senior management. So she goes to this event, this YWCA uh, Greater Los Angeles event, and and gets her picture taken with Gretchen Carlson. She also gets her picture taken with Los Angeles District Attorney Jackie Lacey. That was interesting. Well, yeah, that's because Jackie Lacey's office is going to uh, decide whether to press charges against Scientologist Danny Masterson. Right. So she makes sure, and she gets pictures taken with some other women, and these are designed, these are very misleading so that you think that Gretchen Carlson is supporting it. 
you think that the LA district attorney is supporting it. Uh, the day earlier, uh, she had gone, to, uh, it might be the don't hold me to the days, but within a few days' time frame, she had gone to another woman's event called Denim Day here in Los Angeles. And uh, she got a picture with LA Mayor uh, Garcetti. So that mm. means she had a photographer with her. She has banners. She has some, I don't know if they're Sea yeah. Org members or what, they're holding up signs. So she obviously has a team with her, including a photographer. Yeah, in her YouTube videos, yeah. some of them come across as if she's in the middle of her campaign headquarters. Like yeah. she's got staff behind her. They're at computers. They're doing, making signs and stuff. And you're like, what's going on? What is this supposed to be? Well, yeah, I couldn't figure that out either. You know, my, my the thought that crossed my mind uh, coming out of corporate was it was like an Enron boiler room. It's just for show. There's nothing right. there. The computer monitors probably are not even turned on, right? But Jeff, the thing is, it's so Scientology-ish because even in Scientology, even when they want to film real events, instead of filming the real event, they recreate it. <laughs> <laughs> when Golden Era Productions comes to do shoots for the next yeah. event, then Golden Era Productions does not come to capture anything that's happening in real time. They only come, they show up before an event to recreate stuff they want to say happened, whether it happened or not. So to see Taryn, who's supposed to just be this sweet little daughter fighting a battle for mom, at Golden Air Productions is sitting there going, what should this look like? Ooh, let's make it a, but a beehive of activity. Let's have some people in the background. And then all of a sudden it looks like she's running for office. Like they yeah. miss the point. They, they're totally off message on this thing. because Just like they don't understand the Me Too movement. It's the same kind of thing. No, and this goes to just to diverge for a minute. One thing Scientology is um, does is it steals potent cultural symbols. So back in, in, in the 1950s, L. Ron Hubbard stole the Christian cross. And, he, and that's why Scientology uses what they call a sunburst cross. But it's, you know, you, you could say that's um, taken from the, you know, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which it probably is. Uh, it shows that sort of thing. But it, it communicates to mainstream Judeo-Christian culture back then that we're a Christian group or we're Christian friendly. When Tom Cruise had his time of troubles in 2005 when he went... Uh, fairly nuts on Matt Lauer about psychiatry. He did an interview with Diane Sawyer that was damage control where he posed next to his P-51. Now that's one of the most iconic American fighter planes of World War II. So he made sure he had this iconic American warbird in his interview with uh, Diane Sawyer. And that communicated to a lot of uh, what Tom Brokaw called the greatest generation, you know, mm. people that had come up through the depression and fought World War II. That communicated to that older generation, this guy can't be so bad. He's, he's next to the P-51. And uh, so Scientology has outside consultants. We know that Mike Citrick, who's a, a crisis management guru of Citrick and Company, works with them. Now, one of my suspicions was that he or somebody like him was advising Scientology to try to glom onto a movement. And this mm -hmm. goes, Aaron, this goes to L. Ron Hubbard's um, claim 22 combat medals for heroism and two Purple Hearts from World War II. Yeah. Uh, recovered claimed out of the Bronze Star and two Purple Hearts and uh, 19 other war medals. So that's what's called stolen valor. Right. And I think we have a case here with Taryn Teusch, Kathy Bernardini of stolen valor. They're trying to take the suffering of women who are genuine victims of rape sexual harassment and they're yeah. trying to weave a fair game operation into this and i think it's despicable of them to do this it's true i really think this is going to backfire i mean if anyone's even paying attention uh in a way they did not anticipate it, it makes it particularly offensive i mean we can say it's offensive that they're trying to torpedo the reputation of a guy like mike but the truth is that's kind of par for the course so it's hard to get really offended um but to take something that has been as culturally important as the Me Too movement and then be like, oh, we're going to hide behind this thing. We're going to cloak ourselves in the legitimacy of this movement and, and use it to cloak our bullshit allegations against Mike just to try to get him fired.
from this show. It's particularly offensive because of how important the movement has been um, to, to, to the American society recently. I mean, sure. it's, I, and if people are paying attention enough to, to you know, see what's happening and, and care enough to, to connect these dots, it's really bad for them. Yeah, it is. It shows, it shows one, uh, the depravity. And, and this is a point I've made for a long time about Scientology's volunteer ministers. They will literally walk over the backs of the dead to get photo opportunities. So when there's a natural disaster, a mass shooting, some horror show in real life where you have dead people who have been slaughtered or gunned down, they yeah. deploy the Scientology volunteer ministers in their, uh, their orange coats, or I'm sorry, uh, T-shirts, ye ye yellow jackets, uh, and they take, they take photographs. They get to the front of lines where they're handing out first aid supplies or water, and they use it for PR. After the Virginia Tech shooting, they had pitched a tent while the, the bodies of the dead were still on the campus, and it was still an active police investigation. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is the kind of thing Scientology does. And Scientology is always worse than you think. That's a truism among former members and critics. So the volunteer ministers are ambulance chasers. And this latest operation to try to hijack Me Too is very typical of Scientology. Yeah. And, and what you said, it was made to look like it was just one young lady fighting for justice for her mom. Right. It was actually a much more complex, well-financed, sophisticated, psycho-terrorist operation designed to destroy Mike Rinder economically. Absolutely. Reputationally, and to destroy Leah Remini's show, and to yeah. try to stick Leah Remini by saying, oh, she's supporting, uh, you know, she's supporting Mike Rinder. Look how horrible she is. Absolutely. So, and do you know, this just occurred to me, how amazing would it be if someone like a Megyn Kelly who works at a network that, you know, had to fire Matt Lauer for Me Too stuff. Yeah. C caught on to the fact that Scientology was trying to hijack this Me Too movement to screw Mike Rinder. Um, I think that's something Megyn Kelly would be interested in doing a show on. I really do. I, I really do. <laughs> it's very, I, I do too. And, um, you know, uh, on Twitter, what I was narrating this in real time on Twitter and on my ScientologyMoneyProject.com blog, right? And I was narrating this all because it was happening in real time, and I wanted to capture it as it was happening. And one of one of the people who, re, who reads me and follows me on Twitter, and I follow her, she's from uh, Gretchen Carlson's hometown. Mm -hmm. She reached out to Gretchen Carlson and said, "Hey, look what is look what Scientology is doing with your picture." Mm -hmm. And on the Money Project, I, I have this screenshot posted. Gretchen Carlson replied texted her back and sa said how do i get my picture taken down yeah Ter from Taryn's blog from the twitter gretchen wow. carlson actually took notice and took umbrage to the fact she was being played this way wow she actually said how do i get my picture taken down now yeah. the picture went down off of Taryn's twitter feed did it yes it did Wow! It didn't come down from her website yet, and don't think that that's not going to be reported, Taryn. You need to clean it up. Taryn also posed in front of Disney Studios, in front of the gates. You or that's I could horrible. We could so. we, we could drive over there to Buena Vista by the <laughs> studio. We could take the same shot. She wasn't in the studio, not in Bob Iger's office, not even on the grounds. I'll tell you something. When when I worked in uh, stage and studio lighting in the '90s for Philips Lighting. You don't get on a studio. You just can't walk on a studio. It's a, it's a high security. Because you have a lot of top talent, intellectual property, executives. You have a lot to protect. They're heavily guarded compounds. Mm -hmm. And um, so Taryn has her picture taken outside the studio. That's what I noticed having worked in studios. I know, I was know it Disney it. Studios or Disney, yeah. Disneyland? No, it was, actually the, it was actually the studio in the, the <laughs> studio district over in Burbank. I can see her taking a photo outside of Disneyland and be like, I'm about to go meet with the CEO of Disney. No, it's, out, it's outside the gates of the studio there. And um, it's over by the smokehouse. Uh, uh, you know, nice part by Universal City. Uh, Karen and I just had, had dinner with Jeff, Jefferson Hawkins there at the smokehouse. Anyway, she also 
has her photo taken at the um, LA Convention Center, because I recognize the floor patterns, they're very distinctive, but there's nobody there. So maybe maybe the, maybe Scientology has a contact in maintenance or something. So she goes to an empty convention center and gets a photograph taken, and she has this look of concern. Hmm. And then Taryn claims to do this survey that are like, do you do you, do you disapprove of wife beaters? You know, it's those kind of questions. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah I really, of course, everyone it's like it's like ninety percent of people said yes. Well, yeah, you, people disapprove of domestic violence. So she does a survey. And um, the thing about OSA is it writes programs down beforehand. So there's an OSA program. They re actually write the whole program out, correct? Yeah, totally. And now, writing a program down, OSA, is quite different from execution, especially on social media, especially when everyone is watching and detailing what you're doing and how you're doing it right and t twitter twitter took notice of this i think it was a major failure by the office of special affairs on twitter and social media like you said i think it will come back and it's not this is far from over this yeah. story deserves to be visited and, and, and told yeah you know? and jeff one of you mentioned i think um uh one of the you, you mentioned the thing about having a photographer traveling with her yeah one one of the most important parts of running a mission is documenting the evidence. Really? Um, yeah, because oh, you have to submit compliance reports and evidence of everything that you're accomplishing. So wow. now with her, it's a little redundant because her mission um, involves all of this uh, public documentation. You know what I mean? So it kind of takes care of itself. But but I'm just mentioning it because it is part and parcel to executing a mission is documenting everything. So, of course, she's going to have someone following her around as a photographer to document everything that she's doing whether it's to put it on twitter whether it's to put it on her website or whether it's to send it in her nightly mission report to her mission ops it's all it's all the same thing now that would be that would be another uh, a fellow sea org member yes you know and, and and you probably have a driver a support Probably. team right yeah you know i mean the photographer could also be the driver so it's know. like so it's like when they write the, the program it would be Get your picture taken with L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. Have your picture taken with L.A. D.A. Jackie Lacey. Have your picture taken sure. with Gretchen Carlson. And any, any other luminaries you can get to. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the goal could have been targeting the individuals or the goal could have been targeting the events and just trying to get as many photos as possible with the highest profile individuals there. And it just happened to be those people. Yeah. Um, but either way, it, the, the idea is to create the public impression that they are – accomplishing safe pointing people to their cause and against Mike Render and Scientology in the aftermath. Yeah. And um, I, it's so laughable. I look at it, I, I, I looked at it as just one giant joke. Um, but you know, they're, 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 they're playing with fire. They really are. Yeah. I see. I, I, you can see, you can see this being funny. I saw it being very pernicious and evil. Yeah. But, but in that, Stalinist bureaucrat failure kind of way that incompetence it's funny that way it's funny because it's so poorly executed you know so it does have that element are you kidding me and going back I want to ask you this how does Scientology explain using stock photos right I mean it's I mean, ridiculous <laughs> why are they doing this there and it's like who did they think you know what uh, some smart people on Twitter just used Google reverse imaging. You can put in, uh, yeah. upload yeah. a photo and it'll tell you where it came from. So some very clever people found Alicia Silverson's real identity and that of uh, uh, like Kathy Blair, I think there's another name. And there's this one male model in Europe. And then there's an Italian model who's, uh, who was notified that her photo was being used. When you buy a stock photo for use in advertising, like Alicia Silverson, I checked her stock photo. She's mostly used in vacation and car rental advertising. So you want a picture of a, a, a young woman, a young carefree blonde in a car. Okay, travel, food, fun, right? But when you purchase a stock photo, you're not allowed to attribute any ideological, religious, political views. Oh, really? No, you may not. That's not part of the wow. license. Otherwise... Wow. You know, uh, 
if you were run po for political office, you would have, you know, young, attractive people, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And so Scientologies, when I watched this, they wanted, this was such pandering. It's like, well, let's get diversity. So we want young women, mature women, people of color. We want to show that Scientology is diverse, but they were all stock photos. Right. This uh, this male model from Europe is this rugged, good-looking guy with chiseled looks, you know, like like I wish I could look like. And he's a good-looking guy. He's a model, yeah. So so they want to mislead people in thinking Scientology has all these beautiful people in it, and you know, and the Bud Light, <laughs> the Bud Light of religions, the Bud yeah. Light commercial of religions. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But but this stock photo thing, this is outright fraud. And they're spending so, tax, yeah. exempt, tax exempt dollars to commit social media fraud. And that's what we're really talking about, Aaron, ultimately in the, the day, social media fraud. So, but Jeff, here's why they do things like that. Yeah. Um, let's use Tori Christman as kind of a funny example here. Yeah. I say a funny example because her, it, her example was so many years ago, but it still applies to what we're talking about now. Sure. She was that as a public Scientologist, they involved her in some of the shit they were trying to do online. Yep. And then what happens? Eventually, she leaves Scientology and she spills her guts about everything she was helping OSA do. So it's it's that OSA considers it to be lower risk mm. to invent identities to participate in this bullshit than to actually ask real Scientologists to lend their real identities to the cause. Oh, I noticed that. Let me ask you about that. And Tori has told her story about Bill Yada. I know Bill's watching. Hi, Bill. Hope you're enjoying the video. Um, you know, Gavino and Gloria, the Osa Goon Squad. Um, our stats are much better than yours, by the way. We're in <laughs> screaming affluence. So, um, you know, in this recent stuff, changing subjects to something that just happened. David Miscavige is down in, in Colombia, and the Colombia police give him a medal. And, you know, he's got the Free Winds crew lined up in their dress white, and he's got some Colombian police general giving him a medal. Yeah. Dude, and uh, and um, they had speakers at, at this related event. Was it Maiden Voyage or I don't know the I don't know the name. It was the it was the thirtieth Maiden Voyage anniversary event. Yeah. Okay, so so they had these speakers, and um, the they didn't give them names in the Scientology website. They're not named because the danger is they could blow. So True. They, they don't even want to give them names anymore. So I don't know who these people were speaking. Yeah. I, I do know who they are. I do know who they are. Yeah, they, they are, you know, they're, they're like, you know, they're, they're all people who grew up in the Sea Org and have been in the SO for like 20 years or more. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of those guys I've, I've known since like 95. Um, but I think he's kind of trying to push back. Well, there, there, there's a few reasons why he could do something. Yeah. I think your point was that he didn't even want people to know their names. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, like, I okay, I was only responding by saying, yes, they are real people. Like, they're not hired people. But, yeah, he doesn't want them to be known. He doesn't want another situation where someone like Debbie Cook is really well-known and defects, right? Right. So, like, the only people who would know those guys' names. Um, you know, it's funny, though. I bet in the event itself, they were introduced by name. Yeah. But then in the, in the promo that goes out, they were not. That is a change, Usually the promo identifies the people in the photos. Yeah. And that, that is a change. You're right. That's a change. That's an important change. The other thing, going back to the topic of social media fraud and Scientology fraud altogether, we know from uh, the local uh, papers, you know, casting calls. Scientology mm -hmm. Media Productions, their $100 million failed television network, they – Scientology for uh, a number of years now has been putting out casting calls for people to play Scientologists in Scientology films. Yeah. They actually have to hire actors. That's right. Beautiful young people usually from, yeah. you know, different diverse crowds. So they're actually hiring actors for their films, and these happy young people uh, are actors. And that is, like you said, specifically – because it's too expensive to use a Scientologist in one of those films 
because if the Scientologist leaves Scientology, they have to reshoot the film. And what happened is Jason Begay, Larry Anderson, and Dan Kuhn all left Scientology and have been declared suppressive people. And between the three of them, they were in like half of Scientology's films. Oh, man. So they had to reshoot <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I guess expensive. I mean, Larry Anderson was in the film that was mandatory to show to any new person walking into any new Church of Scientology. It was called Orientation. And you can find it on YouTube. It's glorious. Um, and, like, literally, he was the... T if, yeah. if you want to use that as the definition, he was, like, the main... Um, what's the word? The spokesperson isn't the word. Yeah, well, he, what, what um, he does is he, is he takes you on a tour and orients yes. you. To, so you go through an org, you meet the bookstore office, you meet other people. Right. And then normally, Poster child is the word I was looking for. Yeah, he is. He was like the primary poster child of Scientology. And he fucking leaves and asks for his money back <laughs> and gets declared a suppressive person. They couldn't even keep him happy. They had a financial <laughs> incentive to just keep him happy. Yeah, yeah. You know, all he wanted was his money back on account, like a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Uh, I, I know Larry, and uh, yeah, he's a, he's a clean cut looking, you know, clean cut. He's like a game guy. show host. He's like Chuck yeah. Wool. Yeah, he is. He is. And so, yeah. but now they're hiring actors, so we see the trajectory of of them becoming more uh, more introverted and, and you know more insular. So right. let's let's hire actors. Let's use stock photos, but. The other interesting thing they're doing is um, they've been reaching out to evangelical Christian communities. And in another podcast, maybe we can cover Joy Villa because what she did and how she did and what they're using her for, is, is I find to be interesting, is part of the narrative. So on the one hand, Scientology has PR. They try to say we're good, Christian-friendly people. We're ecumenical. We're interfaith. We fit in everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. but on the other hand, they do this malicious, phony, vicious, fair game where they're trying to hijack the Me Too movement for their own purposes. Yeah. And this is so schizophrenic, and, and people notice it. They right, think, right. You know, like, remember uh, in, in uh, L. Ron Hubbard's era, uh, when the Guardian's office was around, they ordered uh, people to wear clerical collars. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's spokespeople. So there's, like, a picture of Henning Helt, who was one of the Guardian's office people in Snow White, wearing, you know, uh, the clerical collar. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he had a big cross, you know, and he's carrying, right. carrying a big Dianetic, copy of Dianetics in a black leather binder. So, <laughs> so, it looked, right. so it looked like a Bible. Right, 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 right. 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 Now, uh, 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 what's your- Can I uh, comment, can I comment on that real quick? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, and this is something I always knew to be true growing up in the staff Sea Org world of Scientology. Scientology's personality, um, when confronting the world at large, is that of a chameleon. You could describe it this way. Who do I need to be to be acceptable to you? What do I need to be to be acceptable to you? And whatever that answer is, that's who I am. That's what I am. If Scientology wants to move into the black community, they pretend like they love hip hop. If Scientology wants to move into the Christian conservative community, they pretend like they love Jesus. It's not about trying to accurately reflect who they are. It's about trying to accurately reflect who they think you want them to be hmm. so that they can, they can create a good impression on you um, make you think they are nice people. And I'm not trying to say Scientology. By and large, Scientologists yeah. are nice people. But you know what I mean. The, the church so is that, an institution. Yeah. That's right. So that even if they're not trying to get you into Scientology, they're trying to safeguard you. Safeguard means to uh, safe, safe point you. They're trying to safe point you. So that when someone comes to you and says, hey, those Scientologists are kind of quacky. You need to watch out for them. They want you to be someone in society who will go, I know that guy and he's a good guy and I don't want to hear any ill of him. That's what they're trying to accomplish. So I say this chameleon identity. They're going to be whoever they think you want them to be in order to be acceptable. Um, 
And that's why, you know, I have, um, there's one person, a local person who owns a church um, here and the church specializes in feeding the homeless. And she sent me a message on Facebook and she said, look, there's some crazy stuff going on. Can I ask you some questions? She's like, I have Sea Org members showing up to my church, hmm. coming to Sunday service, just standing and sitting in the pews like they're Christians and they're they're giving my church money. They're giving my church food. Like, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to take over my church? Are they trying to recruit me? And so I explained to them, like, no, 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 no. They're just trying to make you think they're great people. Like, that's all they're trying to do. They're just trying to go, look, we're great people. Look, we're like you. That's how you sum it up. Look, we're like you. Yeah. Right? Like, they would literally show up and, and just, like, you know – participate in the Sunday service. And so how I explained this to her, I said, look, she's like, should I take their money? I said, well, if you think they're, there's two schools of thought on this. Yeah. If you think they're bad, then their money's doing more good if it's in your pocket. So it, looking at it that way, just take their money. Just yeah. know that. We're trying. However, if you feel like if you take their money, you're doing a deal with the devil and that would violate your principles, then don't take their money. Like take it or don't take it. But just know what they're trying to do. And as long as you know what they're trying to do, they can't really hurt you. So anyway, that's my now, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point that Scientology tries to be all things to all people mm -hmm. to safe point mm -hmm. itself. Totally, totally. So they can be Muslim. They can be Christian. They can yes. be whatever they need to be. They can be financial wizards they can so that's part of their social betterment groups aaron yeah. i really really appreciate your insights let's do another uh podcast where we talk about their social betterment groups yeah let's do it because that's really that's really not that well understood by the public mm -hmm. and that's something we can bring them up to speed on why the social betterment groups exist yeah and, i like that yeah okay good why well, I, I appreciate your time Again, this is Jeffrey Augustine for Surviving Scientology on YouTube. Aaron, what's your YouTube channel again? Growing Up in Scientology. And how can people find it on YouTube? Did you just type in Growing Up if in Scientology? In, if you type in Aaron Smith Levin, you'll find it. If you type in Growing Up in Scientology, you'll find it. Thank you for watching, and as always, we'll be in very good touch.